Hi, this is Adrienne Barbeau. Just call me Billy. Everyone does. And you're listening to withoutyourhead.com. All right, and we're back here at Without Your Head, and we're joined, making his return here. It's been uh, five years. I just looked that up. We have Andrew Cash on the line, co-director of This Means War of Tales of Halloween. Hey, guys. It's good to be back. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to have you back. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, Annabelle and I were lucky enough to see Tales of Halloween on the big screen last week, and we uh, really had a great time. And uh, since it's come out, what's been the reception like? Uh, it's been pretty positive. I mean, uh, honestly, I think we were all sh- as shocked as anybody when the movie came out as good as it did. Because, we, you know, we, we were all we were all working together. But, again, it's ten different segments from... 11 different directors and you know that on paper that sounds like a huge crazy mixed bag uh so i think when we put the movie together and and watched it for the first time was like oh hey this all actually plays this all (laughs) moves like super fast and and uh and yeah it's like super crazy and fun and and i was never checking my watch and uh so i think we were as shocked as anybody when the movie actually turned out to be a pretty fun (laughs) risk 90 minutes and uh and for the most part the reception's been really positive so uh you know aside from the couple of internet people who occasionally come down who want to take you down a peg but uh Uh that comes with the territory yeah yeah i mentioned that earlier on the program (laughs) i feel i do i feel like there's like a group of people on the internet when any horror movie is about to come out and is getting any sort of buzz behind it, they're just, like, sharpening their claws and ready to tear it to pieces. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it was it was kind of weird to see that there actually was some sort of hype for the movie uh, by the time it hit. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, we had Mike on last week, you know, and he talked about this, but, uh, like, how did you get involved personally? Uh, well, it's it started, like, last summer... Uh, I was at a friend's birthday party, and uh, it was like Axel, Carolyn, and Adam Girash and I, and we were just kind of getting drunk and bullshitting, like, hey, we've got this great horror community. I've always wanted to do an anthology, so, you know, me too, me too. Uh, and it's we kind of just got talking, like, well, wouldn't it be cool if we all put together the L.A. horror community and did a anthology film? So... Um, Axel suggested doing something Halloween themed because that was sort of the holiday that, you know, we all celebrate together out here. We're the guys who always go out to the Halloween parties and the screenings and the haunts and everything. So uh, that just seemed like the big no-brainer. And uh, the next morning we met for coffee. The three of us met for coffee and started jotting down ideas and, you know, director names and stuff. And and Axel kind of took that off. Uh, and got Mike Mendez involved. Uh, once that happened, then uh, uh, Mike brought on Epic Pictures, who had just done Big Ass Spider, and uh, everything came together quick. Like I think after like two weeks after we had that conversation at the party, we were talking to Epic about doing it, and like a month later, we were like clinking glasses together to celebrate the deal. So. Uh, and then, like, three months later, we were all shooting. So, I mean, it came together faster than anything I've ever heard of in my life. Now, how did you How did uh, you and John uh, Skip get together? Like, had you guys worked together before? Oh, yeah, yeah. We've been working together, actually, ever since Never Sleep Again. Um, that's where we met. Because uh, Skip had written the uh, first draft of Nightmare on Elm Street 5. Um, and I was a big fan of his through his novels, you know, like The Light at the End and The Scream and all that awesome 80s splatterpunk stuff that he would write uh, with Craig Spector. And uh, so when he came in to interview, like, I was super geeky and nerdy about it. And after the movie came out, I contacted him. at uh, We shot a, a game of pool at the rap party. And uh, uh, I was like, dude, I want to work with you. And... And we've been making short films and music videos and stuff uh, and developing feature pitches and things for pretty much ever since Never Sleep Again for the past five years. So when I got involved, I was like, all right, Skip's got to come with me. This is, we're a team. 
um, uh, we got to make this work together because Skip's like a creative genius and and has uh, has all these crazy ideas that can elevate anything you throw at him. Uh, what's that like to be co-directors on something? Do you ever butt heads, or do you guys uh, do you feel like uh, it's uh, it's it's a good uh, working relationship? Oh no, I mean that. Look, everybody butts heads, and I mean, it's uh, any member of this like October Society thing and Tales of Halloween will tell you there was like a lot of there was a lot of headbutting on, at various places. Skip and I are pretty much in tune with our like sensibilities, you know, and and we plan the shit out of everything that we do and just talk about it endlessly. So by the time we get on set, we're kind of in agreement, um, and there's no. There's no surprises or differing points of view. We just kind of roll with the punches, and we can even like, like here, here's the thing: like when you're doing like indie, low budget, micro budget stuff, where you're really under the gun and you don't have any time, and you know, twenty, thirty people are like hurling questions at you nonstop. It's actually great to have a co-director because you can kind of divide and conquer. You're not so overwhelmed um, to where you can <clears throat> you can kind of split off and and one guy can address like what the art department's questions are. You know, the other guy can talk to an actor about you know some concerns that they have. So it's just you know it's it's actually made it a lot more bearable than when I was like doing solo directing on my short films. You know, it's made it a much easier process now uh annabelle and i do uh do video reviews and we reviewed uh the movie it's not up yet but uh on our dinner and a movie series and she had a really good uh point about uh she thought it was uh, political do you want to uh mention that annabelle yeah, just that this, it was really funny observing your segment because being in the horror world you do see that there is this almost like just it, exactly what you put into the film that there's this old school mentality about horror and then there's this whole new kind of culture for horror that's very it, precisely what you have like a bunch of people that are into partying and it's a very very social thing so was that something you just put out there because you observed it and thought it would be fun or did it mean more to you than that um, that i mean <clears throat> yeah that it's i mean essentially there is that weird, like, I don't want to say schism, mm -hmm. but there is that weird, like, line through the entire horror fan base that, you know, and this is, and, and we played the lines very broad, but <laughs> there is. There's that whole, uh, you know, old school, like, Forey Ackerman, Famous Monsters generation, you know, all the, mm -hmm. all the monster kids, you know, like the Bob Burnses of the world. Uh, who grew up on Universal and Hammer Horror, and they really have a taste for the classical. Uh, and then you've got sort of like the the modern Rob Zombie, like head banging bucket of tits, like uh, mm -hmm. you know crazy loud and sleazy kind of uh, uh, generation. You know that's hooked on you know that was raised on like Marilyn Manson and House of a Thousand Corpses and you know sort of like the music video generation from like the 90s and up uh so and, and that exists like out in, here in like the la horror community like we're all buddies we're all friends uh and everybody supports each other but you notice there is a little bit of a clickish thing with the mm -hmm. generations you know you've got yes. people like john landis and bill malone and and Bob Burns and and uh, and Dana Gould, who stars in our segment, is one of those like one of the old school uh, uh, like fans. And yeah. uh, and a lot of the modern people, like you know me and Mike Mendez and Darren Bowsman and stuff. It's you know I, I don't want to say we're gore hounds, but we kind of like everything out there. But mm -hmm. you know we seem to have our own clique, and yeah, it's a total like dividing generational thing. Um, and, and we, like, Skip and I think it's kind of funny, um, uh, and some people get really intense about it, uh, and that was sort of like the commentary that we wanted to make on, on This Means War was, uh, that, hey, both, uh, uh, both sides are awesome, and, uh, their fighting can be pretty ridiculous, and it's like peanut butter and chocolate, you know, when you put them together, that's when you get the best stuff. Definitely. Uh, 
Yeah, so that that was sort of our whole approach to it. Um, uh, they, I'm glad you you uh, tapped into that because a lot some some people some reviews that we've read it it people don't grasp onto that. I guess it's I guess you don't really unless you're a uh, like a hardcore horror fan. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, we live that. that here, so. Yeah, I guess it's hard to judge unless you're in a like. If you're in a neighborhood where people do put up crazy stuff and they kind of have that sort of um, stigma to them, like, oh, my God, these are the crazy people in the neighborhood that put up crazy stuff, then you wouldn't maybe have insight into that. But I think for us horror people, it's a great segment to look at because, like you said, it would be nice for people to just blend. Like, Neil and I like all kinds of movies. We like super crazy stuff. Like, we'll watch... You know, like Martyrs and Serbian Film and Human Centipede. We like that stuff. But we yeah. also just went to see the double feature of The Mummy and uh, The Invisible Man and love those. So, awesome. you know, and I know yeah, Troy I like mean, that. Troy isn't necessarily into the, the super creepy stuff, but same thing. Like he likes a whole blend of different things. Yeah, but yeah, I'm still I think, more like that old school, though. So, I mean, true. we do have a little bit of that. Yeah, and I think yeah, and no, no matter where your taste lies. Like, it's it's hard not to like lean towards one side mm-hmm. or the other just a little bit you know with your taste but but I, I try and keep it as even as possible you know I could watch Dead Alive or Creature from the Black Lagoon on any yeah. given night you know yeah uh, yeah we're all like that too uh, the the other cool thing was like seeing all the shit that came out in the news did you guys see that viral vi- uh, news article about like the haunted uh, yard display that was getting all the neighbors oh upset. yeah with the, with yeah. the upside down cross mm-hmm. yeah that yeah. that that could not have come along at a better time <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was weird because I put that up on our group page on, on Facebook on the without your group page and uh, even amongst uh, amongst those people it had uh, uh, some of the older people with kids are like oh those people are just being assholes and I was like, I, I actually think it's pretty cool. I, I don't see anything wrong with it. So, you know, even amongst uh, the horror group, uh, it had uh, it had people on two different sides. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of interesting how that uh, how that happens. And, and and there's still, like, you know, with a lot of modern horror movies, when something comes out that's, like, really pushes the envelope, uh, say, like, a movie like Martyrs, uh, that's when the, these kind of debates like really rear yeah. up, uh, you know, be, uh, between the generations. Like of you know, a lot of the old school people just think it's vile and pointless and ugly for the sake of being ugly and uh, torture and, and, porn. Yeah, I, yeah tor- I, uh, I hate that's the most overused <laughs> term in the world. But yeah, that's that's like what everybody kind of uses to to write something off. And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, guys, come on, I I I, I will jump to that movie's defense. Um, yeah. And, and, and we, we, we do. We all have these sort of, like, fun to... Sometimes we all get a little too worked up over it. But that was sort of, like, the genesis of what we wanted to comment on with sort of the dueling displays. Um, plus that, you know, we live out in, like, the, the Los Angeles... in the valley in Los Angeles. And every person in, like, the suburban area is so gung-ho about their yard displays and a lot of them there there's a lot of competition going on and things like that so uh yeah it just seemed it just seemed like the obvious way to go when we were pitching our segments Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well i'm glad you guys did it whether or not other people get it i think it's it was awesome and it's funny because i kind of saw it for both sides too like i really like this place is cool amazing stuff but i like this old dude he's just doing his thing and it's really cool now wait, wait, let me ask you this: Which was there a person that you sided with, or did you think they were both cool or both dicks? Or I felt more for the older guy because I think his neighbors were assholes. <laughs> I don't think they were trying to really like be. I don't know. I because like okay, f- I have my own Halloween guy up, and he is very scary. I have him and a pumpkin. And my neighbor decided to integrate their dec- their decorations with mine because we have adjoining porches. So they started attaching stuff to mine. And he told me it's because his kid, his little kid thought that mine was so scary. They decided to incorporate them to make it okay. And I'm just like, why are you touching my stuff? That's messed up. So, like, I can see it from both ways, but... 
I, I thought the older guy was at least uh, more decent about it. I think the other people should be able to put up their stuff, but they were mean. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. We were trying. We were trying our best to play it. Uh, to play it sort of even-handed between the two, not like make them obnoxious, uh, mm-hmm. totally obnoxious and loud. Uh, but uh, but not in a way to where like he immediately walks over and they're like, "Yeah, fuck you, man." Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, more like, "Hey, dude, come on, join the party, monster up, have a beer." That was sort of like the approach that we did, just to just to hopefully, you know, because we didn't want to really play sides at all yeah um, and at the end they're, they're both their idiocy you know gets them yes. killed at the end I of the day it was, so it was really, that was really good <laughs> <laughs> thank you mm-hmm. so um how, how did you guys uh pick like uh where the movies uh, were placed that was all done in post the producers really decided the order mm-hmm. um we they they had a scripted order and originally Skip and I was supposed to go first I guess because it was set in the daytime uh, hmm. and not many were uh, when when they started That's off true. but uh, but even then I was like I don't know guys like you really want to open the movie with ours you, everyone's gonna think it's like a really goofy broad comedy mm-hmm. um, and uh, and and so I knew it was gonna get changed up and and the order you know the 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 flavor of the shorts and was gonna because or i mean really order is so important like i've had film uh short films play at film festival blocks and i've seen those short blocks like programmed good and programmed badly and the order that they program things in really depends on how has a huge effect on how people respond to your, yeah. your own short I mean, shorts I've done that have been, like, you know, first or second or third come early that are, like, crazy comedies um, uh, have done really uh, well and brought the house down. But then at another block where a lot of the same shorts have played, you know, it's last up and everybody, like, it's crickets. So it's really, really hard to make that sort of assessment uh, with that and, and, and you don't want to give the audience fatigue So, and I think at the end of the day we picked the right order for the shorts for sure because um, you know even even at a brisk 90 minutes if, if those were in a different order I, I don't think the movie would have played nearly as well now, besides your own, do you have a? It's probably a terrible question to ask because you guys are all friends. But do you have a? Do you have a which, short? Which that, one do you hate the most? <laughs> well, sure, <laughs> sure. You can, you can, uh, <laughs> we can switch it around. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I mean, as far as favorites. Yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly, I think my favorite is Lucky McKee's. I really love Lucky McKee's, and that seems to be the most polarizing. Hmm. Um, but I, 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 to me, it's, it's, you know, I, it does everything. It's hilarious and dark and disturbing and psychological and, uh, and quirky and art house. And it's, it, it, it runs the gamut and in a few minutes and, uh, and it, it, a lot of people can't handle the shifting tones, but to me, I love it. I, I think that's what makes it the standout for me and uh and those performances by like Pauline McIntosh and Mark Center are just amazing so uh that that's my favorite I mean I look I, I can can say without any bullshit that I actually like them all mm-hmm. um and that's a rarity for any anthology that I see um but uh you know certain ones just speak to certain groups of people I look Sweet Tooth, uh, I think Dave Parker knocked it out of the park with that. I think that's the perfect yeah. Tales from the Crypt sort of uh-huh. easy comics thing to yeah. kick it all off. I love Ransom of Rusty Rex. I mean, I, Paul Solitz, you know, everybody's, you know, Girash, every, everybody's. It's, uh, and and it's it's interesting because, uh, uh, like, I, I, we read the reviews and there's no sort of consensus about the movie. You know, there's no there, the reviews haven't been like, oh, this is the clear winner or this is the clear dud mm-hmm. in the lineup. Like every one of us has gotten praised or slammed at some various points, and that's what I love about the movie is that it's it's totally caters to whatever your tastes are. You know, you you can find something to appreciate 
um, or things that you're going to respond to more than others. So, and it's and it's never been there's never been you can you can put ten people in a room, show them show them the movie, and each one will tell you they their favorite was something else. So that's to, that to me was the best success of the movie. Um, yeah. Outside of the fact that we all were friends at the end of it and didn't kill each other uh, <laughs> while making it. Uh-huh. It would. That, sorry. I was gonna say it would be it would be pretty rough to be that that person in the group of people that had created the one that just is universally bombed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and uh, and and that's what we were terrified about too. Um, and and yeah, there was luckily we haven't had any of that, you know. I mean, my short's been slammed in several other, you know, a, a lot of the shorts have in various publications and things like that. But I mean, that, look, that comes with the territory, and yeah, uh, you know. It's, I, I I try not to link to too many reviews because I don't like posting reviews where somebody else gets slammed. I, I, I don't. It doesn't seem to be. And someone always does. Look, that's the the nature of the beast, especially with the ten segments. Someone's always going to get singled out as well. This is the one that didn't work the best. But mm-hmm. uh, uh, but for the most part, like I mean, even a lot of the reviews have been like, hey, there isn't a bad in the bunch, which is great. You know, even even if they think some are. A lot of people have been saying that the whole film is con- so that's that's really cool. I think I think we all feel we all breathe the massive sigh of relief when the reaction started coming out. Uh-huh. Um, uh, see, we have a caller on the line uh, four two three area code. Uh, who are you? Where are you calling from? Okay. What was that? All right. You never. It's funny because you never take calls, and that's what you got. <laughs> I try. Yeah, I normally don't take. Calls never take the calls. Interview. And that was that, she, that, that is why. Uh, was she auditioning <laughs> or for, for a part? Or? I don't know. How would how would you rank that scream? That was pretty. Ex- that you know from through the uh, like the phone and the Skype. Uh, it actually, wasn't bad. <laughs> I think that girl's actually dead now. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe they were actually calling to ask a question, and then somebody strangled them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, Bravo, if though, if so, I that? hope we find out because it would really, really drive up the hits for the show. <laughs> oh, it totally would. Wouldn't you, God, man? <laughs> So, but yeah, so uh, as far as the segments, Neil and I can be—we're very, very honest about our reviews. Even if we we have people that we're very friendly with in the show and stuff, but we're very honest. And and it was the same. It's like there were some that we didn't necessarily love as much as some of the other ones, but there wasn't anything bad. There's not one that it's like, oh, that just sucked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that was that was sort of like the condition they said. Okay, two rules. No found footage, and you can't hey, suck. Yes. So, <laughs> that was, that was like, I love like, that. I'm a big fan All of the right. no... I'm a big fan of the no found footage. You eliminate a lot of suckiness straight off the bat by just saying no found footage. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> so, I, look, I like found footage, too. I think it has its place. Um, uh, there's certain segments of VHS that I thought kick ass. Um, but, but yeah, I think we wanted to take this beyond, you know, a low budget sort of gimmick that you see through a lot of the anthologies these days and, and like try and make it as big and lavish and as beautiful a movie as we possibly could with our, you know, 10 cents. Um, so, and, and luckily everybody like really came out of the woodwork to, to chip in. It's literally like the Los Angeles horror community, the movie, um, I don't think anybody who who uh, out here uh, didn't have some part in it in in one form or another. Mm. That's awesome. So, well, what is the October Society? Uh, you know, the October they just because people like to slap names and monikers on this kind of shit. Uh, uh, you know, that's something that they just came. I think it was Neil Marshall's idea. Um, uh, they just wanted something to call us. Um, uh, I just call us friends, but, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, they just felt like we should be labeled as something, you know, I, I think it, I think it's like, what was the name of the, are you afraid of the dark, uh, camp campers? It was like, mm. 
the Midnight Society or something like that. I can't remember. But, uh, but yeah, I think they wanted to do that to help evoke uh, the Halloween feel a little bit more. So, uh, but, but, but in reality, it's just, you know, it's just a clique of friends that we all have, you know, that we all hang out and, and, uh, and do stuff every Halloween together. And we've been doing it for years, just kind of... Just kind of seen. Aside from Lucky McKee, Lucky McKee was the only sort of outsider. He since he lives on the East Coast, mm. um, he was the only guy who kind of flew in to do it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's. I don't know. Do you guys like the October Society name? Is that I do. Catchy? I do. Yeah, I, I it's do good because time. it sounds like a classic thing. It doesn't sound. You know that could have been around for mm, ages. Yeah, that's definitely the old man side of the street. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I guess. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm not much of like a clubhouse mentality. You know. I. I you know. I'm not. I'm, I'm one of those guys who's like, yeah, kick me out of whatever fan club or, or whatever. You know. Like I don't. I don't like putting labels on things. But. But hey. You know. If it. Uh, if it gives something people to latch on to, awesome. Mm-hmm. And nope. maybe the the October Society will grow and grow and grow as they do hopefully do more of these and bring in more and more filmmakers and who knows the October Society could be pretty freaking large in another couple of years. Yeah. Now I, I noticed I I don't know if it was on your page or was on Tales of Halloween somewhere on on Facebook I just saw it today was that if uh, you get on video on demand for like seven ninety nine uh, you even get special features now I thought that was pretty wild. Yeah, iTunes, they, they, they have all these special features. Actually, I haven't even seen half of them. Um, but, uh, but I know there's, like, like little video diaries that they shot and other things that they did. Um, so that's, that's something that you can get. I think it's just through iTunes, though, mm-hmm. uh, if, it, uh, if memory serves me correctly. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's a cool little exclusive thing. And there will be a Blu-ray with lots of bells and whistles and things like that mm-hmm. in the future. Um, probably next year sometime, but uh, yeah, all I can do, I all I do is implore people, like no matter where they get it from, just please, you know, go through a legit service, because um, <laughs> uh-huh. we did, we, we we are we or we were the most pirated movie on the internet, uh, uh-huh. like the week we came out, and for an independent filmmaker, that's death. That is that is total death when you have a, something that's extremely low budget that's being released through an independent company um yeah it's just it's, it's the worst mm-hmm. that's really sad it is, i mean right? i know it's like a thing where people i i'll be honest i'll go on youtube and watch all kinds of old movies like vincent price movies and stuff like that and that might make me a terrible person but i would not do that i would not dream of doing that with an independent movie yeah it's, it's not like it's expensive it's what less than 10 bucks it's a lot less than going to a movie theater oh yeah 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 a lot less i mean god it was you know a lot of this is pretty much what you would pay if rental stores still existed yeah uh so it's yeah i mean that's the biggest thing is like if people want to see more of this or a sequel or just even more things that aren't studio driven remakes you know you gotta the sad truth is you gotta vote with your wallet um Mm -hmm. and and piracy is just a thing that's it's 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 a weird and terrible it's fun but it, it's also a terrible time to be a filmmaker because yeah with the technology and the demise of physical media no one's really business wise got a grasp on everything's in flux everything's going to streaming and it's we're in the early phases of that and people are still monetizing that and learning how to do that and we have a whole generation of piracy behind it where to where a lot of people it's like that they think that's the easiest the easiest uh way to get something you know and they don't see that as much of a difference between that and downloading it off of itunes or something but it's huge it's it's like these films and our careers and future movies live or die based on that um from the uh, convention circuit, there, I've I've learned that there's this big disconnect between fans and the people that are involved in films. Where I, they, I think that the average person thinks that anyone involved in films is just a bajillionaire. No, that's the thing. That's what we like. We keep having to explain to people, and it's just like, uh, and 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 what a lot of like these super entitled pirates who come out, you know, who who will try and destroy you if you criticize their what they're doing it's like 
oh yeah you're already look at you in the movie business you know you already got you you're making so much money it's like no 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 half of us right now are are trying to like think of how we're going to pay rent like mm-hmm. it, it's literally impo- unless you are have a multi-picture deal with a studio or you're like a television director with an agent who's constantly working um uh and going from like one show to the next it's impossible to make a living as a film director. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like these crew, like crew members who come out and work on, on a lot of these, those guys end up making more money than the directors. And, and, wow. and, and even those guys get paid shit and they have to constantly be moving from one set to the next set to the next set if they're going to make ends meet. So uh, outside of like big, Hollywood tent poles, like everyone's, do- no one's doing this for the money. They're doing this because they love it, and they, at the end of the day, want to sustain a decent living at it. But it's become harder and harder and harder. It's like, as I keep saying, it's sort of like uh, the middle class, you know, uh, uh, that you see. You know, it's like the 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 poverty and rich line that you see in society is is uh reflected in the film business the middle class is dying same thing with yeah. middle budget you know you you either have you know uh 50 million dollars or 200 million dollars to make a movie or you have twenty thousand dollars and a couple of days you know wow. it's, it's that that's that whole middle class is basically annihilated you 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 can't you can't be a John Carpenter or a David Cronenberg these days because the, the 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 budgets that those guys were making movies at you know Sam's early early career Carpenter like Halloween you could you would never get that kind of money to make that kind of stuff anymore like a, a movie like The Thing or In the Mouth of Madness or you know uh, Videodrome you don't you don't fucking see money like that at all to make this and that those were low budget things those were modest budget projects but we don't get that anymore. I mean, there's a reason why found footage and has been very prolific. And I, I mean, I keep screaming that they need to bring back the monster movie, but they can't, they won't. And they can't because monster movies cost money. You know, it costs money to build a monster and no one is seeing the kind of return from these kind of movies. And it's, you know, again, it's all business oriented. I, I would love like so many frustrated horror fans out there. I would love to see this new golden age of like all of this cool stuff, but that's not where the money is now. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's sad. I hope it comes back and I hope you know, but piracy is a huge a huge issue that's made a huge dent in all of this. Um It kinda of so. bums me out because people that won't spend like ten bucks will go get something to eat like one thing one stupid thing like you get a if you are going to get fast food or whatever it's just one thing but if everybody bought the movies then we'd have the movies we want to see exactly exactly that's that's and that's all that's the only thing that's really holding it back you know because we see so many great independent movies we're very very lucky here we get to see a lot of stuff a lot of stuff from europe a lot of great ideas there's so and you know there's so many people that have these great ideas it's just getting it out there it's hard it's it's really really hard it's in a lot of ways it's never been look the i love the fact that the costs have gone down on films and 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 you know you we've really been able to claim independence you the more middlemen you can cut out of the process of making a movie the better but at the same time, it's still the scariest time to be a filmmaker because of all of this. Um, and uh, and yeah, man, I like none of us saw any money off the of tales of Halloween. We did it for the because we wanted to do it. Um, uh, and uh, you know, if we if it's if, if it were successful and and it makes a shitload of money, maybe we'll see some. But at the end of the day, like, yeah, there, I mean, there was no budget to pay the filmmakers. It was all just a giant labor of love. So, uh, yeah, but, but will there be another uh, Tales of Halloween too? I don't know. (laughs) We'll see. (laughs) It's up to you, fans. Exactly. Yeah. And I remember it was a few weeks ago, uh, or maybe it was a month ago or so, but I remember it was the director of uh, Turbo Kid who had the same problem. It was, uh, 
for when that came out, it, it was the most pirated film of that week. Yeah, yeah, and and Turbo Kids, amazing, and I want to see more movies like that. I want to see that those guys make more and more movies and and get uh, and just get, yeah, get deal after deal after deal. But again, that's the reality of it. You know, it's like uh, if 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 that thing doesn't find its if that thing doesn't make money on VOD then it's back to square one for the filmmakers, you know? It's like, okay, so now we have to to come up with another, like, low-budget thing and then spend years, like, really kicking and screaming and fighting to scrape together whatever we can to make it. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know. I, I hope that the business changes. I hope that... I, I hope that people change uh, in how they are willing to respond and pay for digital content because it's totally worth paying for. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, it's, it's, it, is, it is kind of a scary time. Mm-hmm. Well, I know just myself, I don't make movies or anything, but um, if, I, if I commented someone who will, who will post, like, uh, a link to, you know, like, hey, down, you know, watch whatever movie for free, and it'll be on a, it'll be on a group page where it's, uh, you know, supposedly everyone who loves horror movies, and I'll mention, you know, that's not really very cool. I'll get totally attacked. Yeah, it's 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 crazy, and and like people, it, it's weird. People are so casual about it that they every filmmaker working today can attest. Some fan has come up to him like, "Hey, dude, I really loved your movie, man. I torrented it the other day," mm-hmm. as if we're supposed to respond favorably, like, "Oh, good for <laughs> you," you know. And they get really offended when we're like, "What the fuck? You just you came up to me and told me that you were you stole money out of my pocket." Like, uh, uh, <laughs> at least have the so, sense to lie. Yeah, yeah. Good God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so yeah. It's it, 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 but but a lot of people don't think that they're doing anything wrong because it's uh, it, it, to them it's such a casual thing I uh, yeah. I just it, dri- it drives me crazy it totally fucking drives me crazy um, uh, and uh, yeah I, 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 I just wish uh, I don't know I could go on all night about this <laughs> <laughs> well, and we would support you because it's pretty messed up but hopefully people listening out there you will uh, take this to heart because uh, oh, because it is a big deal. Yeah, and it is all, a big deal. Yeah, and everyone who calls in always wants to see more movies like this. So, you know, help out. But uh, what are you doing for Halloween? Um, I am taking my kid, who's like 15 months old, out trick or treating and to see like some of the local yard displays and stuff. Um, and uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll probably watch Ash vs Evil Dead again. Um, that that show's awesome. I heard good things. I haven't seen it yet, but I think Mike it's, also talks very highly of it. It's terrific. It's everything you've wanted it. You wanted it to be. Um, uh, it was totally worth the wait. So I was, yeah. I've seen the first two episodes. Huge fan. It's super fucking crazy and wacky and and uh bruce campbell just doesn't miss a beat as ash uh-huh. so uh everyone's gonna be really really happy with that cool and we'll have to start watching that for the show at least oh yeah i actually saw it, it earlier today i think it was announced that uh stars picked it up for a second season already i'm so happy we could we could uh, i'll take 20 seasons of that show <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's that's my halloween plans what are you guys doing uh, uh, we're probably gonna go to Salem. Salem's the thing. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, uh, uh, and then there's so many different movie things going on in Boston. There's a lot of stuff. They have uh, two 12-hour movie marathons, and then there's another theater that I'm sure is doing something. But it's Holy a shit. lot. Yeah, very, very lucky. That's, that's a good place that's to cool. be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah Salem cool. seems like it would be. A, they would do Halloween right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's very touristy, but, you know, it's it's once a year. You go, you look around, you see some of the costumes are amazing, truly amazing. That's what I really enjoy, because I've been going since I was pretty young. It, but you'll see just those few costumes, and it's free. It's not like I'm paying admission to go in. You can pay and go in all the kind of, like, goofy, touristy, like, haunted houses and pirate museums and things like that. But uh, just to walk around and people watch is really cool. And then as long, and then we'll just do something after that. Like see twelve hours of horror movies. Yeah, and and decide yeah. which one to take a nap during. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last year yeah, I learned we're... my lesson. I brought uh, I brought very comfortable clothes to be in. I brought like cushions because the seats are old. It's like old old theaters that have the stage and the curtains, so the seats are all crap. It was so cozy. It was wonderful. <laughs> hey, I think I think you actually slept th- during the Incredible Melting Man, which was hell. Uh, yeah. Not on purpose. Uh-huh. When I woke up, when I was waking up during it, it was wonderful. It was amazing. <laughs> that was the fault of the movie, though I believe. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty bad. Oh, that's right. You said it's just a guy walking around melting and someone, Steve, <laughs> yeah. Steve chasing after him. Yeah, it that does kind of take it down a notch. It's just like a guy yelling, Steve! <laughs> like, he's got to get a, like, a cooler name. It, it, it was a demo reel for Rick Baker, I think. <laughs> this, yeah, <laughs> this the the yeah, so Annab- the last time I saw that movie, I was 12 and I adored it. Uh, <laughs> I think Annabelle saw the best Keep your way. memories, Troy. Yeah, keep yeah. I will. I will. Yeah, watch. yeah. <laughs> You really saw it the best way. You could just wake up and see various levels of melting, and then. You know. Oh yeah, <laughs> the end is tragic. <laughs> All right, guys, I I have to. I have arrived at my destination. I'm All actually right. going to see Prince of Darkness in the oh, Prince nice. of Darkness oh, Church. Oh, uh, really awesome! I don't blame yeah. you. Get get the hell yeah. going. Yeah. <laughs> what, one one but, quick question: Where do you stand on candy corn? Oh, hate it! Oh my god! <laughs> Oh, fucking, fucking vile! I was... I, 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 I've never understood why people like candy corn. Or I, I, you know what? Fuck that! I've never met anyone who likes candy corn. Uh-oh. I was called a disgusting human being earlier for saying that I like candy corn. So. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Which is why we're laughing. So. <laughs> well, here's the thing: somebody has to like it because they keep making it. That's very true. It's very true. <laughs> it's nail. <laughs> I yeah, just eat it. No, he that, actually that, that, company. He just makes it. Feed it to Sweet Tooth. <laughs> oh, right. God, yeah. I think that, that, that shit could be used as landfill. Um, <laughs> a very colorful landfill. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on. It's been a great time. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, uh, yeah, it was great to be back. Cool. Yeah, it was great to, great to talk with you. Yeah. Well, have you Congratulations on your awesome new movie. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. All right, guys. Talk to you later. See ya. Have a good time with Prince of Darkness. All right. Thanks. Yep. Bye. Hi, this is Mike Mendez uh, from Tales of Halloween, and you're listening to Without Your Head.